There's certainly a lot of drama here today. As you can see, the House is still debating. This is an historic moment, but there's very little jeopardy. We know that the Democrats have the numbers and that Donald Trump will be impeached in a matter of hours behind me here on Capitol Hill. And that's really why the focus is already shifting to the Senate trial in January, which is very likely to go the president's way. The Republicans want a quick process that acquits and they hope vindicates Donald Trump and allows him to focus on the thing he really cares about, re-election in 2020. This is not a matter of politics. This is a matter of protecting the integrity of our democracy for the next generation. This is the most unfair, politically biased, rigged process that I have seen in my entire life. The Democrats say nothing less than democracy itself is at stake. The Republicans slam it as a politically motivated witch hunt. Whichever you believe, one fact is undeniably clear, that today, December the 18th, 2019, Donald Trump is set to become the third president in American history to be impeached. Should the president be impeached today? Absolutely not. <laughs> Tell me why not. Why do you believe why not? They have absolutely no proof. I'm on Judiciary Committee and Rules Committee. I've debated this for hours, went through the testimony. Not one of their Democratic witnesses was able to establish that the president committed bribery, treason, or high crimes or misdemeanors. The Democrats say the evidence, though, is incontrovertible, <laughs> it's uncontested. Well, obviously that's false since I'm contesting it. The president has to be held responsible for his behavior. It's a message to him and to future presidents that they have to be held accountable. There's no wrongdoing here despite the evidence? There is no evidence. It's all hearsay, conjecture, and speculation. Gentlemen, should the president? Yes. Absolutely not. It's ridiculous that we're even doing this. I disagree. He says it's a witch hunt. Is it a witch hunt? If it's a witch hunt, we are certainly finding a lot of witches. After months of evidence gathering, it all came down to this. Two charges against the president. The first, abuse of power, relates to that phone call with Ukraine's President Zelensky, in which Donald Trump is accused of abusing the power of his office for his own political gain when he tried to pressure the Ukrainian president to open an investigation into his political rival in return for a meeting at the White House and, crucially, nearly $400 million worth of military aid. The second charge, obstruction of Congress, accuses the president of then blocking access to key documents and witnesses requested by the Democrats as part of their investigation. We gather today under the dome of this temple of democracy to exercise one of the most solemn powers that this body can take, the impeachment of the president of the United States. The prospect of impeachment might give a president reason to pause for thought. Not so President Trump, who last night sent this blistering letter to Speaker Pelosi. In the six-page rant, he lambasts the Democrats for waging an attempted coup and declaring open war on American democracy. And he said Americans in the Salem witch trials of the 17th century, who were accused and even executed with no evidence, were afforded more due process than him in what he very variously called a spiteful, baseless and preposterous process. What's clear is that this is an America more divided and partisan than ever before. Even in Bill Clinton's day, Democrats dared cross the line to vote for impeachment. But today, so vice-like is President Trump's grip that not a single Republican even voted for an inquiry, let alone actual impeachment. And you have a president that is a malignant narcissist who is out of control. He's a gangster. And, uh, you know, strong we, language. Well, uh, his actions are strong. They're strong against the Constitution. Is and it legal, is it not, to ask another foreign leader for a favor, a favor which, yes. Could, yes. which could change the outcome of a democratic process? Yes, it is absolutely illegal, which is why they should have put them in the articles. They did not. Are you agreeing that he did do that? No, I'm not saying that they do that. You asked me whether or not they were illegal. Yes, it is illegal to do. But to... that's what President Trump asked for. No, he didn't. Well, I mean, I see that's your opinion, so. Impeachment's what he's getting for Christmas and maybe a lump of coal. It's certainly not a present that Donald Trump wants, but it's an outcome that looks certain later today. For the big question, how much harm will impeachment actually do him? 
With an election looming, could the whole thing perversely end up giving the president a boost if he manages to persuade voters that it's he who's the real victim? So politically, this may not hurt Donald Trump. We won't really know the impact of what's happening here until voters decide his fate next year in the election. Certainly the polls would suggest his base is behind him for now, but that could change. On a personal basis, though, President Trump will despise what's happening to him here today. Despite the bravado, he will not want impeachment to be his legacy. As one person said to me today, impeachment will be an indelible stain on his presidency, just as it was for President Clinton and the prospect was for President Nixon before him. This is not what Donald Trump will want to be remembered for. Cathy, back to you. Thanks, Siobhan. Well, earlier I spoke to Neil Katyal, author of the book Impeach. I began by asking him whether President Trump was more or less deserving of impeachment compared to the two previous presidents impeached. What this president has done, no president in American history has done, which is to say, I'm not going to let you have a single witness, a single piece of paper, a single document, phone call, nothing. Um, it's been a complete 100% um, stonewall of the documents and witnesses that Congress wants. And, of course, some of those uh, Trump appointees actually went and testified anyway because they felt their obligation was to tell the truth to the American people. But the president has tried to obstruct. But do you have any sympathy with the idea, with his notion, really, that impeachment is always going to be political? No. I mean, it's uh, the idea, you know, that the, the Trump is saying, like, this is political and you're always out to get me, I think Pelosi and others didn't, even though there was overwhelming evidence that the president obstructed justice in the investigation by Robert Mueller, but they didn't do it. And Pelosi, for years, has said, I don't want to impeach. It's always a tool of last resort. In fact, back in when Bush was president, there was a lot of pressure on her to impeach Bush for the Iraq war. And she went around the country giving speeches saying she wasn't going to do that, that impeachment couldn't just be a political weapon. Clearly, you could argue it the other way, couldn't you? And that Trump is making this intensely political now. Um, and that actually isn't there a risk for the Democrats that this could backfire on them very much and indeed on Joe Biden himself, uh, particularly with Trump lashing out and, and invigorating his core supporters? Now, the impeachment's a core duty for every member of Congress, regardless of whether it loses them votes or, you know, influence or whatever. I mean, how do you look at yourself in the mirror after taking an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and say, oh, it's okay to go and have our president cheat in a foreign election. So I don't actually care about the political consequences for the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. I think this is a straightforward rule of law issue. Assuming he is impeached today, um, it seems almost certain that he'll survive the Senate trial. Um, in which case, what is the point of impeaching him if he's not going to be removed from office. I mean, trials have a way of changing people's understanding and narrative. And sure, the president's defenders in the Senate are trying to have a, a fake trial, a show trial with no witnesses. But I think if there's a real trial, we will see some pretty dramatic changes. And I think if the president is called to testify, that can very much change the narrative. And so, uh, you know, this is not exactly a president who's known for telling the truth. So, uh, you know, and to do it under oath, I think that will be a particularly important set of proceedings. And, you know, no matter what, after today's vote, if it goes the way that it's looking uh, in the House of Representatives, you know, Donald Trump, the first line of every article ever written about him will be, Donald Trump was an impeached president. And I think that's important because the re historical record uh, should be set straight about what this man has, has done to our Constitution. Neil Katyal, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Well, I'm joined now from Phoenix, Arizona, by former Republican Senator Jeff Flake. Just assuming that tonight's proceedings are a bit of a sort of fait accompli, so looking ahead to that trial in the Senate, if you were still in the Senate, would you have broken ranks with other Republicans and voted against Donald Trump, do you think? Well, there hasn't been a trial. I wouldn't want to uh, presuppose what would be done. Uh, if I were in the House, I, I, uh, being a House Democrat, uh, being in charge, I, I wouldn't have brought these articles forward. I, I think that uh, it will likely embolden the president. Um, it, it, it is, uh, I think, inarguable that the president uh, has committed, uh, committed offenses that could be impeachable, uh, but the Constitution leaves it to Congress on whether or not to bring those articles of impeachment. 
So I think that uh, this will likely, in the end, strengthen the president's hand moving ahead, and that's not something I want. But the Democrats' argument would be, well, they've held back, actually, for months, and really they now have a constitutional duty to act. Do you not buy that? Well, I mean, after the uh, Mueller uh, uh, report that we got, there were... Uh, you know, there were things in there that uh, indicated that the president may have abused his office or, or at least tried, but uh, was kept from doing so uh, just by underlings who wouldn't carry out his orders. Uh, you could have argued at that time that that was an impeachable offense, but uh, Nancy Pelosi and others, uh, I think, uh, decided uh, that wouldn't be the proper thing to do. The same could have been decided here. I think uh, Nancy Pelosi didn't want to move forward this time, but was pressured to by uh, the base of the party. So uh, it, it, whether or not to bring articles of impeachment is very much still a political decision. And I, I do uh, admire those Democrats who believe that it's their constitutional duty to move forward. I can't understand for the life of me uh, Republicans who, who will maintain uh, the position that the president has done nothing wrong. But uh, I would rather see uh, the president uh, removed from office by the voters that's what will likely happen next year, I believe. Well, do you think, though, that any Senate Republicans will vote against Donald Trump? Should they? What would you say to them? I, I don't, uh, don't know if they will. I think it's fr frankly unlikely. Uh, but I do think that, uh, that a number of Republicans in the Senate uh, who don't want to be viewed as House Republicans uh, will, will come forward and say that the president did do something wrong it just doesn't rise to the level of impeachment, or we have an election coming up within months. So let's not go there. But, Is, uh, but they won't defend the president, uh, and I don't think that he should be defended in this regard. But is that cowardice, though, on their part, to pull back no, from impeachment? No, uh, it, it's, it, it, it's not. It's not. Uh, you can make a principled case that uh, this simply doesn't rise to the level uh, of, of uh, removing the choice uh, from voters. Uh, so, no, you can make that case. What I think is indefensible is still defending the president's actions and saying that that was proper. Uh, but not every bad action by a president is an impeachable offense. So I, I think you can have a principled defense against impeachment, but not to say that the president did nothing wrong and then to climb on a campaign stage with the president. Uh, I think that that's indefensible. Clearly, Donald Trump, you know, has an eye on the history books. He's likely in them now for all right. the wrong reasons. How much will that hurt him, do you think? Well, I think he, he certainly is, is feeling that now. You've seen him lash out uh, even more so in the last uh, couple of weeks and in the last couple of hours. Uh, so he doesn't want this. He doesn't want the history books to note uh, the first sentence has uh, been said that uh, he was impeached. So that's not something any president wants, but I think that he will turn it to his political benefit. And, and, and uh, one, the, the Democrats in the House right now, I think, would have done well to wait for the courts to come back and rule that right. certain individuals should have to testify. Because now, if additional information comes forward with the Southern District of New York, for example, and Rudy Giuliani, uh, that could have very detrimental effects on the president politically, okay. uh, but not after an impeachment hearing.